Good morning. It's Sunday morning at 9.03 a.m. How about that? The date, 1.26 of 2014. How about the fact that trading tomorrow on Monday on 11.27 is going to be another week of trading, but it's going to be the last week of a calendar month of the new year. Not only that, the reason why this year is different is because um, the markets have been happy with Mr. Ben Bernanke, your FOMC chairman, for the last eight years. And prior to that, well, I spent all eight years with him and I spent about 17 years, it seems like, with old Alan Greenspan. So I've gone through uh, a couple of Fed governors. We have a chairwoman She's going to be in there. It's going to be a big deal to the market, and everyone's already trying to price it in. But nonetheless, it's a whole new set of circumstances. When we narrow it down, we do narrow it down as she is very dovish, and she's not going to do anything to disrupt the equity markets. And that the language in there about the tapering in there, she's going to be delivering her first her first report on interest rates and that's going to happen this coming Tuesday which is going to be the 28th so markets are already nervous because I will show you why once again the Dow was down 318 points NASDAQ 100 ended up closing down 72.27 the NASDAQ composite at 41.28 was on a closing level minus 90 points so the S&P 500, the closing out number is minus 38.17 at 1790.29. Now, let us not forget that that was one of the biggest weekly sales that we've had. And you would have to go back to 2012 when we had something similar that has happened. Now, back in 2007, uh, January started straight down. Then in 2010, right here, on, and this is a monthly level, it was a negative month, nonetheless. So this January, there's an old myth is, and here's 2011, it didn't sell down right away, but it did sell down five months, and this is in calendar 2011. Now, having said that, this bull run, as of last year, it's a breakout from what? From the 2009 lows. It's a multi-year breakout that happened in common bull markets because that's what they do. So one of the things that we can say is it's always hard to justify where this bull is. It's not because, it's because of a lot of things. And that this recovery has been slower than any other recovery in U.S. history. It is the truth. And you got a lot of negatives. But the market has managed to get out of those negatives for the last number of years. Starting right here. It all started right here, 2009. Look at that monthly breakout. Look at that fade back. Look at that several months in a row to the top in 2011, we called that short. It's on stockmarketfunding.com. Just simply go back, type in Dow Jones. You'll find it there. Look, at we called that top. We called this big-ass reversal here, the big reversal in year 2000. Now, listen, from the 2011 lows, it starts this way. And at the end of... 2011, like any period, November, December, January, February, all the way through the March quarter and up until May, is historically speaking uh, the most bullish time of the markets. However, it doesn't always work that way like it used to because the world changed. So when we let, take a look at where 2012 was right over here, this is that monthly sell down that you see here is almost identical to the 2014 sell-off here on a monthly level. So basically, I draw the trend line right up there, and I am going to blow that part of the chart up, 
and you can see once again on this monthly level you had five months here you had a fade back to support you had a rally and this is what the government was doing but every pullback in 2013 was met with buying that dip mentality now you're in the quarterly earnings profits the market is not going to look past stocks that don't deliver those quarterly numbers they're not if they're an inline number or guide below her, they are going down hard and for the stocks that are reported Best Buy, Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, there was a lot of stocks that were in there. IBM got killed. Uh, so the quarterly profits are based on multi-year expansions. This is the most important quarter because it's a 36 months. So you go 4, 8, 12. That's three years of 12 quarters. So Wall Street is fatter than it's ever been. They got $7 trillion on the balance sheet. Publicly traded companies, and they're not coming off of it. We told everyone starting out January, and this month has not completed the downtrend. That 10 month moving average is down here, the blue line. That's that 10 month now. I'm going to draw a trend line right here. There it is. And it's right over here where we had major resistances one month, two months. The third month it went up, and it wasn't until the fourth month of the low and closing above those resistance points where we went from that breakout point, we went up. This month is one, two, and three. Now, here we are, and let's take a look at the previous month of December, which has passed by, and let's draw a trend line right here as well. Now, we have broke down in this monthly distribution so far. But just remember, the month isn't over yet. And just remember, we already had told people prior to January that we're in now what it's going to be. It's going to be much more volatile. That means that the bear is going to get the move like it's getting here right now. And then the bull is going to get its move. So volatility is going to be more equally rated throughout this calendar year. And the first monthly calendar is almost over. We got Apple reporting earnings. We haven't seen a big pullback in this S&P forever. And that the high was 1850 during this week or at, during the week out of this monthly contract, it was really one week that got to the lows in a weekly format, but one day, just one day. And that day was a huge drop. We closed at 1790. That's a very, very psychological number right now. That is the benchmark. That is the psychological number, 1790. Now, having said that, that's what it looks like on a monthly level. Looking at it on a weekly level, it's very easy. We go back here to 2013, but we're really working with 2014 now. However, we're going to draw that resistance line. Whenever you have a weekly sell bar that is much greater in value in the previous weekly bars, here, these were very narrow range. The rally over here in 2013 in the end of December was very narrow range. What happens is here, here's the following. You break below the 10-week moving average, that's at 1815. The value of the 20-week moving average is at 1773 currently. But this bar on a weekly level was only one day that was really the majority part of it, and that was on Friday. However, one thing you always want to be mindful of is when do these uh, markets change the course? We're changing it right now. However, every pullback in 2013 was buying the dip, and that had worked. This is the major support line. And right now, we have fallen through this particular trend line, which equates to 10-week simple moving averages. So... Once again, 
2014 is going to have a lot of volatility. It's not going to be like it was in 2013. People got very complacent. The fear indicators on Friday called the VIX was 31% move. And that is something that the bull side of the community of bulls are not prepared for. But then again, the bears are prepared for it because it's been long overdue for them. So remember one thing. Bull always is exuberance. And then the bears can be very pessimistic in an exuberant fashion as well. We are a referee. There's going to be lots of buying opportunities, lots of money on the sideline that's going to look for a home. That's why this particular year is a major catalyst from the 2000 yearly breakout on a yearly breakout level. So the bull has a lot of support. Just look for much higher price volatility.